Um, Rosen has the, adjusted his game. He's also come out to the three-point line, so he's just not a mid-range guy. Their ability to play good defense consistently has been one of their calling cards, so they are a little bit different than the teams that have flopped in the past. All right, moving on. Yesterday we asked if the Cavs hit rock bottom. That was after they lost by 32 to the Houston Rockets, but before losing to the Orlando Magic, one of the worst teams in the league. Is there anything lower than rock bottom? Are we in the crust, the upper meosphere, the inner core? Geology aside, lately it seems like Cavs fans are living in the upside down. Here is the beleaguered king after another crushing defeat. No time to, um, you know, to throw shade about our season. We got to continue to be positive and continue to push forward. We got, we got quite a few games left, and uh, you know, if we, you know, still serious about the season, then we got to, you know, now play some good ball, you know, at some point. No, no one's come to save us. You know, it's not the coach's fault. It's the players. You know, we got to own it. Um, all of us. You know, we get opportunities. We all got to do our job. And if we're not doing our job, then we got to have to come out and let somebody else come in and do the job. As players, we got to we got to do better. I mean, when when they start to go on their runs, which teams is going to do each and every game, we got to come together. And it's like right now, when when we hit adversity, we go our separate ways. It's a it's a big telling comment from Isaiah Thomas to just give a little insight into what happens, even though we sort of know that that happens when they lose. But I'll ask you the same thing I've, I've been asking. I mean, how, how are we explaining what happened to the Cavs both last night and, and of recent? They're a terrible basketball team right okay. now is the quickest explanation. What happened last night was the mirage wasn't what happened in the final three quarters. The mirage was what happened in the first quarter. The Cavs got up 21. I want to make sure America knows who they lost to last night. The Cavs blew a 21-point lead to the worst team in the league who did not have its best player. Okay? So Orlando, at full strength, is the worst basketball team in the NBA. They were without Aaron Gordon, maybe the league's most improved player, and a guy who I believe is their best player. And they had, what did this turn into? A 39-point turnaround from 21 down to, uh, to winning by 18 points. Mm -hmm. The fourth quarter... In a season, CC said yesterday, you can call it rock bottom, but don't build a house on it. Well, you found a new rock bottom yesterday. So specifically about yesterday's game, what happened? In the first quarter, JR was hitting his shots. Isaiah hit his, some shots. In the next three, the rest of the game after the first quarter, JR, Isaiah, Derek Rose, Channing Crowder. How about one of 22 from the field for two points? Like, so that's specifically why they lost yesterday's game, but it, that is a symptom of a much larger disease that has afflicted this team since Christmas, which is why since Christmas they have been one of the two worst teams in the NBA. What's the disease? Is the disease chemistry? Um, well, Isaiah said that, you know, when, when, when they face adversity during the game, guys go their separate ways. I got some news for Isaiah. When they get on the team bus, they all go on their own separate way anyway. Look the team meetings, all the conversation. As a matter of fact, it's led by LeBron. LeBron is doing his own thing. I'm not going to say he's checked out, but he's going about this season differently. LeBron, the reason why a lot of these veterans have taken less, come out of retirement, Richard Jefferson, is because LeBron was so inclusive to all those guys. Like those guys traveling around with LeBron is like traveling around with the Beatles. Those guys traveling by themselves, they're nothing. Look at all the restaurants, they're nothing. All right, they're nothing without LeBron. So now LeBron has decided he can't take this team with him. Why? Because he's not in, in a good space with Dan Gilbert, the owner. He has no relationship with the general manager. He has no clue of what's going to happen in the future, and they're not that good. Without Kevin Love, they don't have enough guys that can score the basketball. Typically, when you can score the basketball, that will cover up for your woes defensively or the team not being connected. That's why they look good the first quarter and didn't look good the rest of the game because their offense is not good enough to cover up for their lack of chemistry. This is a bad team, and as I said, these are LeBron's last... You got 32 games left, Cleveland fans. All right, 32 games. LeBron will leave Cleveland after the playoffs. You don't oh, after the playoffs. Okay, I was gonna. I didn't know if you were well, having. Oh, no, there's no need to get carried away. Let's let, okay. let's let it just keep falling. Okay, like. Okay. Okay. Let so it on yesterday's show, the man across from me here, Chris Carter, said that the Cavs should ask LeBron to waive his no trade clause. Then, as soon as our show went off the air, everyone else seemed to wonder whether LeBron should waive his no trade clause. 
Then my four-year-old asked if LeBron should waive his no-trade clause. After the Cavaliers lost the game last night, a bunch of reporters went up to LeBron and asked him whether he should waive his no-trade clause. Take a listen. Listen, I'm here for the long haul. You know, I'm here for this season right now to try to, you know, figure out ways we can still compete. You know, um, I couldn't give up on my teammates like that. I couldn't do that. That's, um, I just couldn't do it. We put too much into the game, you know, every single day. Uh, we go out and prepare, even though win, lose, or draw. At the end of the day, we all brothers, and we understand that. So, you know, I owe it to my teammates to, uh, to to finish the season out, no matter how it ends up. So, no, I would never wave my no trade clothes. Pretty definitive there. So, CC, look what you started with all of this. You, you mentioned this yesterday. Now he's come out and said he's not going to wave it. So, is there? Do you have something else for us? No, no, we're start? strapped. I mean, that's the, that's, that's the next it? thing. Yeah, you're strapped. All right, they're going to get knocked out in the playoffs, and just like before, he's going to take the jersey off and leave the Cavs and go to his next team. That's the way it's going to end in Cleveland. There's no, there's no need to be dramatic about it. Like these are the steps and these are the signs. Yes, LeBron, I know. Yes, this is my teammates and everything. Yes, absolutely. No, I don't want to be traded. I'm not going to give up on it. You know the reason why? Because he'll get blamed for it. They'll say he quit on the Cavs, regardless of what team he goes to. They'll and come up with other. Before the end of the season, if he were to wave, his no trade. Of right. course. And I and I, the, I I am not a professional reporter. However, I occasionally do some reporting, and I can say definitively, without question, a leading contender in the league inquired to Cleveland about acquiring LeBron. And they were told this was prior to CeCe's uh, speculation. They were told no, he's, he, it doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you want. He doesn't feel he can leave Cleveland during the year. Doesn't because of either what it means for his image, what it means. But he has, he has the opportunity right now, or had and does for the next 30 hours, to abandon this ship a few months early and probably give himself a better chance to win a title. He is not going to do that. I understood CeCe's point, which is, man, Milwaukee could still be a contender, give up a couple pieces for LeBron and be the favorites in the East. We know that Houston would love to have him. If he, could, if he and Kyrie could get along for a few months, Boston. could. There, there, there are teams that could make the salaries work and acquire LeBron. He'd be in a better situation than he is right now. But the Cavs are not trading LeBron. Which begs the question, if they are going to make a move in the next 30 hours, why on earth would they not be talking about trading Isaiah Thomas? If you remember, one of the reasons that Dan Gilbert was skeptical about trading for Paul George was Paul George is a pending free agent. Well, Isaiah Thomas is a pending free agent. And I understand that Dan Gilbert, and this is another issue with the ownership right now, he has always loved the underdog. It's one of the reasons he loved a guy named Kay Felder. They paid a huge premium to get this guy in the draft a few years ago because he's undersized. Dan Gilbert's looked at himself as an underdog. So he and Isaiah Thomas have become very close. The owner and the acquisition this year. But Isaiah Thomas, since he's gotten to the Cavs, has been statistically the worst player in the league. I mean, what are you going to get for him? That's what? my question. Well, if, if it was at this point, I mean, he a bag is of Doritos no, and no, a no, Coke? No, no, no. At this point, he is an expiring contract, and he, you would have to pair him with, by the way, a draft pick. Like, when I talked about whether or not they could trade for Kimball Walker, you would have to, you, if Charlotte wants to get off money, you would give the expiring contract of Isaiah Thomas, the expiring contract of Channing Fry, and you're going to have to include a draft pick. Right. I, I think that it's on the board. I don't think it's, I think it's on the board that they are looking to move Isaiah if they could. But, man, what are they going to get for him? Right now. I mean, I mean they're not going to get anything for Isaiah. What do you accomplish by, tra by trading him? Well, right now, what you would accomplish is him not playing in your lineup. Because right now, oh yeah, we can go put Derrick Rose in there. Well, when they were playing their best basketball, it was Jose Calderon. They, Cece, they when I, they okay, Nick, no problem, Nick. Mm -hmm. Jose Calderon, you called him barely an NBA player. Correct. Yep. So now you changed it up, like he's like he's Marcus Haynes now. I mean, I, he damn Bob Cousy. Uh, no, I mean what he. I heard what you said. Absolutely agree that that I and I was surprised that Calderon LeBron was playing at the MVP level. Mm -hmm. Don't don't be looking at the point guard. LeBron was playing well, different what you, too. What do you think? What do you think was the? What is the big difference between the Cavs when they won 18 of 19? The Cavs, the first two games with Isaiah, when on this set it was said they would have the best record in the league moving forward, and what they've been the last month. It has been Isaiah Thomas has been unplayably bad. Like Jr. has been bad all year. The, oh, 
Crowder's been bad, bad all year. Crowder's been bad all year. Okay. They were bad. Tristan, hurt and bad. Right. Those guys were bad when the team so what won are we 18 discussing? of 19. I'm, what I'm are we discussing? I'm discussing the one, the guy, I'm discussing the guy that since he got there is when they've gone into tailspin. I'm discussing the guy that confronted Kevin Love and caused more discord. I'm discussing the guy who said right there in the comment that we played, oh, we go our separate ways. Well, you are one of those guys, IT. IT's been awful, right? Like, we agree on that, correct? LeBron I... played with worse players and still won, okay? Y yes. Okay. LeBron's played with worse players and still won. Spread the blame around, all right? Just, just spread it around equally. Well, take, take yesterday, for example, though, if we're going to spread the blame around equally. Yesterday, what, was LeBron or was he not the best player on the court? Did he or did he not play a really good game? And they got blown out. Okay. LeBron would typically beat Orlando, okay? Why is he losing now? He, he, he beat Orlando re just repeatedly with bad players. Mm -hmm. All right? So LeBron is part of the problem too, Nick. Nick, you don't think but LeBron's checked out? I said yesterday that he looks as disengaged as I've ever seen him. Last night, uh, listen, I, uh, 25, 10, and 5 on 65% shooting, that... Uh, w J.R.I.T. Rosen Crowder, one of 22 from the field in the final three quarters, is why they lost that basketball game. The question is, after tomorrow's trade deadline, are they going to have all four of those guys still on this basketball team? Well, meanwhile, that trade deadline is quick.